Welcome to another edition of Family Matters. I'm Chloe Leary, the D Executive Director of the Winston Prouty Center. And this is our third episode where we uh, had the first two. We talked with Amanda Pizzolo and uh, then Sally Pennington. And we're talking about issues that are of interest to families with young children. So we are working on the developmental trajectory. And we talked with Sally about attachment and uh, bonding and what happens right after a baby is born. And today I am thrilled to have Mary Coogan with us to talk about um, so now that I have this baby, <laughs> what do I do with it? Um, a lot of parents have questions about development uh, and sort of how best to do it. Parenting is not something we get to practice. We might have lots of role models or not, but um, just some of those initial questions of once you get over, okay, I brought the baby home, they let me bring the baby home. <laughs> what do I, and they're eating and sleeping kind of, and I'm mm -hmm. sort of getting out of that fourth trimester, that's what Sally called it. Mm -hmm. Then what do we do? So lots of uh, parents worry about development and what they can do to best support development so I think yeah. we're just gonna have a general conversation to give people ideas about things to think about so I think that's a great idea good, good. so thank you for yeah. being here my pleasure um, so let's just start with uh, some general um, concepts about parenting from your perspective like what are what's a new parent what to keep in mind not that there isn't a ton to keep in mind but when they're thinking about supporting their child's development I think there's a lot to keep in mind it is an awesome responsibility um, it's stunning. You bring a baby home and you're thinking, and it's all you've been thinking about for a long time, and all of a sudden the reality is here. And it may not be the same baby that you were dreaming mm. about, and it may, um, and you may also not be the same parent you thought you were going to be. You don't recognize yourself, you don't recognize this baby. Mm -hmm. It can be overwhelming. And when you think about it, it's a huge responsibility and a huge task. This little thing needs to learn an awful lot in the next three to five years. They need to learn how to regulate their emotions. They need to learn how to regulate their attention. They need to learn how to console themselves mm -hmm. without our help. Mm -hmm. They need to learn to make sense of the world, uh, how to learn, how to communicate. And they need to learn to form um, really meaningful relationships with other people. That's a big task. Mm -hmm. And guess who's the main teacher? The parent. <laughs> and so that's a huge curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that the most important thing for parents to realize is trust the baby. Huh. Uh, we're the first teacher of the baby. The baby is our first teacher. This particular child has different needs than another child, even another child in our family. Mm -hmm. um, and the important thing to remember is a newborn is very, very competent. Mm. They come into this world, Sally did a beautiful job of describing how they come into this world wired for relationships mm -hmm. because that's what they need to survive. So they're wired to move, they're wired to woo you, mm -hmm. to get you to attend to them if you can, mm -hmm. if you're awake, if you're available. <laughs> but they have a lot of tricks. They're working really hard to do that, mm -hmm. but there's, their behavior is not random. Mm -hmm. It is organized. The central nervous system is a beautiful, miraculous thing. The baby, a newborn, hears a mother's voice and can already turn toward the mother. Uh, a newborn can really seek a hand, a nipple, a breast, mm -hmm. you know, just for comfort, can mold into a body. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's pretty remarkable. Mm -hmm. They rely on us for the regulation. Um, so they're sending us signals. And I think this is where parenting comes in. The mm -hmm. biggest job of a parent is to learn to read their baby's cues. Mm. Um, and the other important thing for a parent to remember is we're not all experts. That's why there are a million different baby books, um, because there are a million different relationships. Mm -hmm. Every baby is different. Every parent is different. And parenting has to look different because of that if it's true parenting. Mm -hmm. So trust the baby is mm -hmm. the first thing. And the other thing is trust yourself. Mm -hmm. It's trial and error. Mm -hmm. Real learning, um, we're, we're talking about teaching. We're not talking about training. Mm. The baby mm -hmm. needs to be an active participant from the very, very beginning. Mm -hmm. We need to listen to them and respond to their cues. That will teach them how to talk to us and mm -hmm. tell us what they need. Mm -hmm. So we want to learn to read those cues. We want to give the baby time to tell us what they need. Mm -hmm. And it's trial and error. Right. So the trial and error, that strikes me. You know, a lot of people are looking for what's the answer. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes, there are lots of books, and you can go on mm -hmm. the web and, um, or talk to lots of people. I mean, I think lots right. of parents talk to each other. Yes. And what I hear you saying is the answer might be 
something that you come to maybe through investigation but right. it's not a right or wrong it's it's not a right or wrong and and sometimes our mistakes teach us more they teach mm. us more about ourselves teach us more about what the baby needs and it's important to be in that uh, it's a relationship mm -hmm. optimal development occurs in the context of this parenting mm -hmm. caregiving relationship so I think that when I mean trial and error I think of these three forces that drive development. Certainly, it's that push of the central nervous system forward. Mm -hmm. Then that's where we use it. We crawl, you sit, you walk, you go through that. There's that push going on for all babies. And then there's this internal feedback loop in the baby that says, hey, I'm aware of this push, and it's pushing me here. Uh-oh, that's too much. I'm overstimulated. I'm going to shut down. Or um, I'm really uncomfortable, help me get through this piece. This is inner awareness that the baby, the baby's not just a passive receiver uh -huh. or a force that the nervous uh -huh. system is pushing forward. That's why you need parents. And then there's this external force, which is the beautiful scaffolding that a parent can provide. So when a parent, a uh, baby's going through a disorganization, and these um, disorganizations can be because they're having a huge developmental push in mm -hmm. one area of development, they're frequently accompanied by regressions in other areas of development. Mm -hmm. It's not this nice, smooth progression, but it's also frequently causes disruptions in mm -hmm. other behaviors, sleeping, feeding, mm -hmm. attention, regulation skills, um, during these times of transition that are so important. So the parent has to come up with a theory of what's going on with my baby, uh -huh. and they have to bring to it different perspectives, a developmental perspective, Maybe this is, um, you know, there's something, um, this could be a tooth coming in, this could be something, maybe it's biological, we're not, I'm hungry, I have a wet diaper. It could be cultural. Mm -hmm. It could be what you bring. This may be the way you were parented or the way your siblings are telling you to parent or your friends are telling you. So you bring all those things in and you look at the baby and it is problem solving. Mm -hmm. And so you say, well, I think this is because he really, he's about to start walking, so I think he's, you know, just wants mm -hmm. to practice it over and over again, and he's all charged up. So you, you try that. You create a safe place for him to practice that. And if the baby settles down fine, you're like, whoa, I figured that out. Mm -hmm. I know more about the baby. The baby mm -hmm. now knows that I will help support them when mm -hmm. he gets disorganized. If, it's, um, if you make the wrong decision about what it could be, you're like, oh, no, he's crying more at night right. now because I think he's just being, I think I'm spoiling him. I'm going to let him cry it out a little bit. And then you go through weeks and weeks of this. I think most parents say, my theory was wrong. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Oh, let me talk to some people. Maybe it's because he needs to walk. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's going to just settle down and I'm just going to make him feel better. I'll go mm -hmm. in and say, you're going to be fine and, and you know, uh, push him back down. So these periods of... Uh, regulation, disorganization, cause disorganization in the parent. Mm -hmm. And they have to happen mm -hmm. because this is how the parent knows my little boy is a man of action mm -hmm. or my little girl just wants to be up and see everything going on around me. Okay, then this is how I'm going to structure mm -hmm. her world to make mm -hmm. sense for her. So those early years, it's sort of in the, and Sally said something similar, developing, as a child is developing, a parent is developing, and that, that sort of feedback system and relationship building is really the, the thing that's happening. It is the thing that's happening. There are general trends, you know, you know certain toys might be more appropriate. Parents have responsibility to create an environment that they can learn who their baby is, who their mm -hmm. child is. Mm -hmm. And that can be hard sometimes. Sometimes we want the child to be who we want them to be. Mm -hmm. But um, they do come with their own, mm -hmm. like from the very beginning, anyone who has more than one child knows from the very beginning this is a different person. Uh -huh. right. And we need to treat them with respect like different people. Mm -hmm. So I think parents have a responsibility to do things like structure environments where they're safe, they're physically safe, but where they're free to explore that are cognitively challenging for the mm -hmm. baby, mm -hmm. where the baby really has to do a little problem solving of their own. And a place that's also emotionally nourishing. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to give them uninterrupted time for play, not always directing their play, but give them time mm -hmm. to figure out what makes sense to them and what doesn't and what they enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, I think that those are the sorts of things that create a space where the baby can reveal themselves and we can learn about them. Mm -hmm. um, we get so tasked, we have to do this, we have to do that, and, right. and that can interfere sometimes. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, not that there aren't times when the baby really needs to fall apart, fit into our routine, 
um, that has to happen because that's the world they live in. Yeah. I think uh, just to talk a little bit, you mentioned um, sort of how to fit kids into our worlds. I think one of the things that happens with um, with newborns is trying to figure out that schedule and then mm -hmm. you get lots of feedback about the mm -hmm. schedule is really important and mm -hmm. oh my gosh it's nap time right now mm -hmm. talk a little bit about and yet creating an environment where there's some mm -hmm. room to move can you talk a little mm -hmm. bit more about that like how to set up a routine or how to know what that routine should mm -hmm. be or sort of I think with especially with infants there is a need certainly in the first few months that you have to sort of follow their cue but you really do want to sort of lead them into the routines that mm -hmm. work with the rest of your family and your life i think that consistency is hugely important for mm -hmm. little ones and it also falls over into discipline things down the line you learning uh with the child this is what i expect at this time oh it's time for nap. This is the time you're going to settle down. Just by doing it consistently every day really, really helps them. It right. helps them organize. They know what to expect. There are mm -hmm. times you're not going to be able to be follow that routine either. So you don't want to create a rigid baby mm -hmm. or um, have expectations. This is also another thing in relationships of parenting. One parent will be may uh -huh. follow these routines, and the other one parent doesn't value that as much, uh -huh. and so, um, and it can lead to a lot of stress. I think that's something that all parents need to know. That's part of the renegotiation mm -hmm. of your life when a little one enters into your world. Mm -hmm. Babies can do okay. They actually they do well. They are responsive differently to different parents mm -hmm. or different caregivers. In early care, if children need to spend longer time in early care because that's what's required in your life, they can do well as long as they know what to expect from their mm -hmm. caregiver too. It's whoever your particular relationship is, you want to be consistent with them. Mm -hmm. um, and I do think honoring some kids don't want to nap. I think that's following their lead, but you always invite them to do so because it's good for them. It's physically helpful. Yeah, so that's a great point that um, there are things that we do with babies. Like, uh, you know, you, you've mentioned before sort of the big three, the areas that are, that are challenging, eating, eating sleeping, sleeping, behavior, and behavior. or yeah. to, it's lots of people yep. talk about the, you yep. know, going to the bathroom, like things you cannot make your child do. You right. cannot make right. them sleep. You cannot right. make them eat. So that that can become a real control point mm -hmm. and that inviting is so important. Inviting so. it rather than imposing. Mm -hmm. uh, little ones have very little control over their world often. You know, mm -hmm. it's just the reality. Um, and when they do feel stressed, those are the areas that you see it happen in. Mm -hmm. um, and they do need our support in that. And I think about this also not as training, mm -hmm. but as teaching. Mm -hmm. And teaching means that they need to initiate it. Mm -hmm. This is also about learning and play. If we create an environment that encourages them to do it themselves, where we don't steal their accomplishment, uh -huh. that they're not doing it to please us. Toileting is a perfect example, but so is sleeping, and mm -hmm. so is so is uh, managing behavior. You know, tantrums. Kid throws themselves on the floor. They're falling apart, falling apart. Some parents are so afraid of that distress, mm -hmm. but we need to teach them how to regulate themselves mm -hmm. so we can validate say oh that was so hard for you mm -hmm. when you're when you're when you're calmer let's talk about what will happen next time when you don't want to stop doing what you're doing mm -hmm. and no matter how young they are they know our tone and our intent Sally talked about that too from the very beginning we need to invite them to things like oh you know it's time to change a diaper you want to try the potty first no that's okay maybe tomorrow you want to do it great right. and so without the pressure because it's huge think about their curriculum again there's so many things they're trying to pack in yeah. they are eager to please us but they also are cognitively driven to know mm -hmm. we're talking about toddlers now mm -hmm. we have to honor that now say that is really hard that's mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. when they own it is when they do it when are they successful toileting when they've decided to mm -hmm. do it mm -hmm. when when are they successful sleeping mm -hmm. is when they understand that it's not it's healthy for them it's not an option mm -hmm. I'm gonna sit here to you and you're gonna be fine so you just want to join them and at, invite them all the time to be mm -hmm. an active participant mm -hmm. um, without the pressure of that you mentioned something earlier about um, uh, we have to help them regulate yes. learn that regulation piece yes. so this strikes me as a similar part of that conversation yes. that where it's a support piece it's not telling them what to do it's sort no. of naming or recognizing no. but that that's sort of helping them absolutely. regulate absolutely and even as we're saying oh you you're feeling better i'm whole i'm here i can help you mm -hmm. as they get older say oh that was really hard you know 
here's your blankie, mm -hmm. that you feel better now. Mm -hmm. Or here's your sippy cup, now you feel better. Mm -hmm. And so pretty soon when they're in the feeling they'll go get their blanket themselves. And mm -hmm. you can even teach them, you feel better, you just got your blankie, that was mm -hmm. a good idea. Mm -hmm. You know, but staying close and building on those skills and letting them know that they've done it. When they have language now, you know, right. when they're starting to fall apart, you're saying, oh, that was hard. Say, no, mom, you know, or not mm -hmm. yet, or, you mm -hmm. know, one more turn. That's fine, right. you know. Or you're mad. That's okay to be mad. I don't want kids to be afraid to be mad. Right. I don't. I don't want when kids hurt. I want to be able to say, "Ow, that really hurt." Yeah. And then you know, you know, help them through that. As opposed to, "You're okay. You're fine. Let's go." It's our tendency because. If we go, oh, they right. do fall apart. <laughs> right. They do. They just, we just told oh, no. them that is something to be upset about. You know, if a baby wakes up crying, wanting, you know, and, and the caregiver goes, oh, no. You know, they're like, oh, I have something yeah. to be worried sort of about. And it in the environment and being like, oh, I guess I should be worried. Say, oh, that's hard. I'm yeah. here. And you've yeah. got this. You can do this. So that, it's, it's, that it's, curriculum is a full spectrum yes. of emotional and, uh, you know, that whole acknowledging all of that and yes. not just making everything okay. Like, no, no, you're okay. Or that's everything's right. okay. It's or like how oh, that hurt, or you look sad, or yeah. acknowledge, and I think we all and want I'll that. And I'll help you. Right. And it's not even that. It's, right. And it is, you know, how we tell them it's okay, really, by our tone of voice, by our confidence, mm -hmm. our encouraging tone. Mm -hmm. I think that half of teaching and half of parenting is, oh, that was really hard, but we can do this. We're mm -hmm. going to do this together. Mm -hmm. It's that idea of not staying in this moment of intense feeling and mess, but but saying, wow, that mm -hmm. was crazy. Let's yeah. not do that again. What can we do next time? It's this idea that I'm not stuck here mm -hmm. yeah. and that this is my only choice. Right. Creating the I options. think that's creating yeah. the options. Great. Good. Yeah. Um, we are going to take a really quick break uh, and look at a short ad from Let's Grow Kids, uh, and then we'll come back and talk some more about development. Great. For the youngest among us, playtime is more than just fun. It's learning and development. When we stimulate a child's curiosity and natural desire to connect with others, we help them develop the important skills needed for school, relationships, and life. Join Let's Grow Kids to help all of our children reach their full potential. Learning starts day one. And we're back. <laughs> so we've been talking a lot about um, sort of general development and how to support it and what are some of the things to watch out for that there's not necessarily right answers and wrong answers mm -hmm. and um, that it's really a, it's an evolving process of learning and teaching between mm -hmm. parents and, and, um, and, and infants and children. Um, lots of parents get worried that their kid isn't developing right. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong with my kid. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about... Um, you know, how do you know? What are some things to look for? What can you do? Uh, sort of those concerns. And you'd said yes. earlier, sometimes you don't get the kid you thought you were going to get. Yes. So um, let's, let's right. move into that realm a little bit. It's important that we recognize that there's such a wide range of typical behavior or what they call normal development. Mm -hmm. And then there's creative development. <laughs> but even, even typically developing perfectly healthy kids um, can, because of who they are, develop certain things they do to get their needs met mm -hmm. that can interfere with the next stage of development. Mm -hmm. So in typical development too, uh, teachers and parents are problem solving all the time without the need to, for any special intervention, but it can get tricky sometimes. And all normal development is also pauses, bursts, and regressions uh -huh. all the time. So all normal development, every kid you meet, there's certain times in the first five years where there's something really seriously wrong with them <laughs> in, a, in a certain way. So just relax, it's okay. Well, no, not, but, but not, just, yeah. so again, like, so how do you know the difference? Yeah. You know, we have a wonderful system of screening in our area. The pediatricians do do screenings, certainly mm -hmm. at the 18-month checkup, but at other ones as well, and they keep an eye on them. And we work closely in all the preschools, so we have mm -hmm. our eyes out everywhere. But I think for a parent, the two things that you notice first, and I think I've just learned this, um, the first thing is lack of something. So the baby's very, very quiet all the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, or the baby doesn't move a lot. The mm -hmm. baby can't, you know, so it's a, it just something that is less than. Mm -hmm. The hallmark of healthy development is movement, noise, all those mm -hmm. things um, happening. If you don't see that, 
hmm, you think, well, this may be more than temperament, then it's worth taking a look at. Mm -hmm. You know, at hearing, vision, those things you go through first. Uh, but the other home thing that I always look for is um, repertoire of skills. Normal development, kids do things 20,000 different ways. If you ever see a toddler get up from the floor, they're going to do it five, 10, 15 different ways and practice and practice. A child who's developing a little bit differently may just be able to come up through a and sit in a W sit. That may be the only way they can sit. All kids W sit sometimes, but they also move through side mm -hmm. sit, short sitting. They have a million other options. What's a W so sit? A W sit is when they sit with their feet. I can't even do it. I'd show it to okay. you. It's very uncomfortable. <laughs> so that their feet, their um, so are tucked behind them. And or, they're or sit. The they're out to the side. They're oh, absolutely okay. down. They're. It's okay. really an uncomfortable but very common situation. I taught this course once in development, and I took a picture of my son, a video, and we stopped it every, we did stills, like every 15 seconds. It was a, like a two-minute video. Mm -hmm. And um, I was wondering about his development after the class because everyone's just like, no, that's very abnormal. <laughs> but when you stopped and looked at him, about 75% of the still shots looked like an abnormal oh. posture. Uh -huh. But it wasn't. He was moving through he was posture. Just moving so it's really about um, that. We look for things that interfere with the next stage of development. Uh -huh. So children who may need more support rely a lot on cheating. Uh -huh. Smart kids always cheat to get what they want. A little baby who's very social but has some weak muscle tone for whatever reason, um, but want, needs to be up where they can see everything. They're, they don't want belly time. They can't stand it. Or on their back, they can't do a thing. So they want to be up all the time. So what do they do? They cheat. They arch and stiffen their legs and arms so they're up. And the parents are like, look, they like to stand. But that means they're stuck. Uh -huh. Their hands aren't free. Their eyes aren't free. So um, some very clever children. So again, if you meet this baby at first, everyone's saying, that's a normal muscle tone. It really isn't. I mean, it's not tight muscle mm -hmm. tone. Mm -hmm. But it really is this clever little baby mm -hmm. figuring out a different way to do it. Let's talk about that example. So what do you do? Like, what are some, when you're when you're trying to think about how to help a baby build yes. their repertoire, yep. uh, what, are yep. some, what are some things to keep in mind about yeah, that. Yeah, so what you do, yeah, you make sure that you honor what the baby really wants to do, which is to be up and to see. Mm -hmm. You make sure that the, the parent understands the way this child cheats. Mm. And you show them positions for play and for carrying and for things that don't let them cheat, where they're going to get those nice movements in ways that are not, um, that are not difficult or that mm -hmm. can be embedded into mm -hmm. everyday routines. Mm -hmm. Hands to mm -hmm. feet at diaper time and rocking while you're talking to them and playing. You know, just things that fit really well into a family's life. This baby still is going to need some of that belly time and things, but we might do mm -hmm. it on a higher surface so gravity's not pushing down. So we might have them playing on a mm -hmm. couch cushion with mom right there so they have that mm -hmm. stimulation right there to do to tolerate it more. And as they get stronger, they can get down to the floor eventually. Mm -hmm. But we always talk about that, you know, mm -hmm. the importance of belly time to build up that strength mm -hmm. to come up against gravity. Not every baby gets it. Mm -hmm. Babies <laughs> now are like really in a lot of upright postures all the time. Mm. But we are seeing a lot more feeding issues. We mm -hmm. are seeing a lot more um, tilted head torticollis. We're seeing a lot of things, I think, that are related to kids being propped up right before they're ready to be there. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. Uh, back to sleep has been very important and it remains very very important but we have to make sure we balance that with belly time uh -huh. because we're also uh -huh. getting kids who have uh, misshapen heads from mm -hmm. being on their back <laughs> no but it is oh, it is what you get but yeah. they're alive i don't care <laughs> you know that's the important thing but it means that we do have to make sure that they get the other pieces that they need you know development is multi-dimensional mm -hmm. so um uh, we have a child who is this particular child this is my social girl she wants to talk she wants to use her language to get other people to bring things to her and not to move. That's fine. <laughs> Here's my little action man. He doesn't have anything to say. He can get anything done he wants. He can climb up and get it. He doesn't have to talk to you. These are our kids. All our kids. Right. Whether they're typically mm -hmm. developing or not. And we have to honor who they are mm -hmm. by making it fun mm -hmm. for them to also mm -hmm. communicate mm -hmm. to. So recognizing them. sort of where they need to broaden their skills. So it's not unlike what you're talking about before in terms of emotional regulation, yes. but it's those actual physical things. That, yes. that That's the whole continuum and seeing what um, a, a kid is or isn't doing and then helping them build that Using repertoire. those strengths, those very strengths are the things that we'll use uh -huh. to get to what we to need. To get to the next We have step. to honor it. If we mm -hmm. can't just impose it on them again, it has right. to be meaningful. Right.
So a uh, kid who's an action kid, you're going to start by running and doing freeze tag and getting him to start to control his body and pay, pay attention to me because mm -hmm. I've got the rules, mm -hmm. I've got the keys, mm -hmm. you know, or something like that. It's important mm -hmm. to use where they are and for families to feel comfortable about that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. have it be, you said something about having it be part of uh, a family's life and an everyday routine. That Absolutely. seems really, you know, important in terms of it's not necessarily rocket science. Not to say that in development there aren't things like somebody's mm -hmm. going to need to go to a speech mm -hmm. and language pathologist or Absolutely. somebody's going to need to go to a PT. Absolutely. But that there's a lot to do to sort of just build it into the world for it them. Is, it is the most important thing, I'll tell you that. What is meaningful, and they've shown this in studies, Babies learn best when they're engaged in meaningful, functional activities. What is meaningful to a baby? To be an active participant in the family, to be mm -hmm. an active, to have friends that they're playing with through mm -hmm. toddler. That is their motivator. They're not doing it because I'm giving them lessons or I have my hands. Mm -hmm. I was a pediatric physical therapist for many, many years. And we could get the most beautiful movement out of babies, like with our hands. And it was good. We'd mm -hmm. do this. And sometimes even we'd do things that babies look great doing it, but they're like, that was work. I'm not doing that again. <laughs> and I realized, wait a minute. What if I structured the environment so the baby does it? No hands. Uh -huh. You don't need me. Mom can structure the environment so the baby does it. Mm -hmm. That is learning. This, this baby owns that movement. Mm -hmm. That's something they're going to do over and over and over again. Because once I make it make sense for mm -hmm. them, because it's to roll over to get to mom who's over here, mm -hmm. they own it and they're going to do it again. Mm -hmm. They're not going to do it because I just said, roll, roll, you know, it just, <laughs> it, it's just disrespectful. It is about an active right. participation yeah. in meaningful activities. And, and recognizing, you know, uh, earlier you said something about newborns are born with lots of skills so trusting them and their confidence and that they are um, sort of having that respect for who they are and their, that what they bring to the relationship yep. and that it's a relationship not doing things to and, uh, kids and but exactly and not letting our fear of not doing the right things interfere uh -huh. with our curiosity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about who this baby is mm. We don't have time. Mm -hmm. It's the hardest thing. But even if you're working and you're very busy and you are and you have a busy life, make sure that the time that you do have is that time where you are really having a relationship mm -hmm. with that child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not just getting in the car mm -hmm. to go to this, to that mm -hmm. talk the whole time we're going in the car now. It can be very quality. Mm -hmm. Here mm -hmm. we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to miss you today too, but I'm going to see you when I get back. And, you know, those yeah. sorts of things. Just... Um, we carry so much and they reflect so much back mm -hmm. at us. And the importance in relationship of, uh, it is important to mess up sometimes because we learn more. We do. And then there's also a lesson in that of like, I'm going to mess up as a parent and you're going to have to help me as a kid. And it just, I think, right, strengthens that uh, sort of. It strengthens that relationship. And when you think about it, it also helps them ready be much readier for the world because the world is not going to be do what they expect and there's so many hard lessons to learn not that i'm going to be create all these disruptions on purpose <laughs> but, but but it it is really honest yeah. um and and it helps this child learn how to be resilient and learn how to be more active that they by the time not not at two and three but by the time they're five they should be able to mm -hmm. participate in problem solving around how to make this work more easily mm -hmm. for everybody here and they do it's a remarkable thing mm -hmm. we, we are almost out of time I know it's hard to believe I feel like we're <laughs> just getting started um, and there is yeah, so much to talk so about with development so I'm sure that we will come back to this topic at some point but I think this has been a good uh, primer and what to think yeah. about when considering child development so thank you thank you um, and I just want to say thank you all for uh, watching the third episode of Family Matters we've been talking with Mary Coogan who is an early interventionist at the Prouty Center and has been there for many years so um, going, we are on going on 15 we are yeah. fortunate to have her um, and um, we, I'm sure we will see her again sometime so thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time mm -hmm.